Okay, game 44 of the season last night was somewhat of a wild one, not really as far as the score goes, but I think it was a very up-tempo, high-paced type of game, and the Sens are looking better in these type of games, whereas, you know, even like a year or two years ago, I could never imagine them playing at that type of pace, especially with a team like Winnipeg. And even though they did lose and fall short at the end of the game, they played to Winnipeg's pace, if not better, for the majority of that game. Line of notes in this one, Matt Murray gets his first start since March the 10th. Jacob Bernard Docker has an unexpected NHL debut as Nikita Zaitsev was a late scratch. He had a bit of an injury uh, issue plaguing him, it sounds like. So he sat last night's game out and that paves the way, like I mentioned, for Jacob Bernard Docker to come in. I'll get to him a little bit later on. So 119 into the first period, Nick Paul would score his fourth of the season, his first goal in a couple of months. He had a bit of a hot start somewhat offensively, then he really cooled off, but he gets back on the board. Nick Paul, if he's not scoring, it's not really problematic because he does a lot of other good things well, and he's not a guy that they really heavily rely upon for offense anyways. But with all that being said, it still is good to see him get on the board. That one was assisted by Thomas Shabbat. And it's 1-0 Ottawa early and things are looking good, but when you get a back and forth game with a lot of speed and exchanging some chances, especially against a team as skilled as Winnipeg, it can come back to bite you sometimes, and it did. As just 324 into that first period, Mark Shifley would score his 16th of the season, assisted by Ehlers and Pionk. And it's 1-1 all of a sudden, and it's looking like it's going to be like an 8-7 game or something like that. That 8-7 game would never amount, and I'm happy it didn't amount that way. I just want to touch on something a little bit here, is that I know the NHL wants more and more goals, but for me personally anyways, I don't know, let me know in the comments down below if you feel this way too. I'm okay with the odd 6-5 game and stuff like that. It's kind of exciting, but I don't know. If we got those every night, it would get kind of boring. It would almost be like, oh, I don't know, the goalies are too lousy. No one can defend. I mean, I thought last night's game, you know, which was would be considered somewhat of a lower scoring game, I thought it was very exciting and very high paced. There were some chances, but, you know, I don't want the players to score on every chance you know, on either side. I mean, that just would suck the excitement out of the game if that was the case. Second period would remain scoreless as well. And we go to the third period where the Sens take a penalty early on and just 207 in, Matthew Perot scores on the power play. It was the second unit out there for Winnipeg. He made an absolute heck of a shot, broke Matt Murray's water bottle even. The Sens though, they gave him a little too much time and space on that power play and you know, that's what I was talking about last video. Even though they have a good looking penalty kill sometimes, they've, they're have they very inconsistent. They've been very inconsistent for a number of years on their penalty kill now. The Sens have not had a penalty kill click at 80% or better for that being their final percentage of the season since the 14-15 year. And that's dating back a while now, as that's about six years and running now. Then Ottawa gets a power play with a chance to get back in it, and they surrender a shorthanded goal to Trevor Lewis, assisted by Nate Thompson. Thompson, the former senator, very briefly though, by the way. This was a really weird goal because Shabbat, he kind of stopped in the neutral zone, and I think he thought it went out of play because it, he kind of stopped, like I said. And then all of a sudden the puck comes back down onto the ice and Lewis is already has a step on Shabbat. And Trevor Lewis, I mean, he's kind of good on these breakaways, it seems. Like, I know he scored one against the Sens a few years ago with LA. I believe he scored one earlier this season on the breakaway as well. And he gets one here. So Winnipeg's, you know, fourth line grinding type of guys get the job done shorthanded. And for Ottawa, that's pretty deflating for them to give up that shorthanded goal. When you're going on the power play down by one, you're always of the mindset, of course, and so you should be of the mindset that, hey, you know, this is a great opportunity to tie this game up. Instead, you leave that power play down by two instead of just down by one or even tying it up. And Josh Brown would get absolutely walked by Mark Shifley. And poor Josh Brown, I mean, I'm not big on the way this guy plays. I don't not like Brown the individual. Like, it's not like he's a really dirty player or anything. I, I just don't think, you know, he's very adequate out there at times. I thought he had a pretty okay game, but this was one play where he really got exposed by Mark Shifley, and Shifley came in on a low, and Murray made a big save. Shifley got tripped up on the play, but because Murray got the puck first and Shifley second, I think that's why they didn't call it tripping. I'm going to go ahead and assume that. And then the final, like, three minutes of this game was just an absolute penalty fest for both sides. So first, Zub takes a penalty. The Jets go to the power play. 
Then the Jets take a penalty. I believe it was Paul Stastny. And then, you know, the Sens, they pull the goalie at six on four. And then Drake Batherson makes this absolutely wonderful looking rush. He gets hauled down by former Senator Dylan DeMello. DeMello goes to the box. It's a six on three for Ottawa. How often do you see that? And what happens? Josh Norris absolutely rips home a blistering one-timer past Laurent Bossois, who was in net. I probably should have mentioned earlier for Winnipeg. My bad. But nonetheless, the Sens are within one. That one was assisted by Shabbat and Brown. I just want to mention Connor Brown's eight-game goal-scoring streak does come to an end in this one, unfortunately for him. And, you know, it would have been nice to see him keep it going, but it was a great run for Brown. He does pick up an assist on this one, so he keeps his point streak alive at least. And Josh Norris plays really good against the Jets, as now that's four goals and I think seven or eight games against them this year. So good for Norris, but unfortunately for the Sens, they would pull the goal, keep the goalie pulled with like 10 seconds left, face off at center. They just couldn't get it set up, obviously, just not enough time there. And they fall 3-2 to two in regulation. And you know, I'm not going to complain really. Obviously, this increases their draft lottery odds, especially, you know, I think teams might put more of an emphasis on potentially tanking now. Not that I think Ottawa's doing that by any stretch, especially, you know, playing Shabbat, these, this crazy amount of minutes that they play him every single night. They're definitely not trying to tank. But I think maybe some other teams might try and do that. As now, you know, like I mentioned in the other video, there's only two spots you can drop as opposed to the full three. So if like you finish dead last, which I'm assuming the Sabres probably will, they're going to be guaranteed a top three spot regardless. I like that formula a lot better than the one that was previously used where you would drop three spots. And I think that's just really unfair to some of these teams that are really bad and you just can never get a good player, it seems like, if you have poor draft lottery fortunes. But for Ottawa, this is a really good, well-played game. Even though they lose, I thought they were with Winnipeg every step of the way. Two really good games against the Jets here. And they're really showing that although maybe they might come up short sometimes, they're definitely in every game with every team. But now it's time for them to go out and show that on the road and show that in Winnipeg, show that, you know, in Vancouver. You know, obviously they won't get to show it in Edmonton this season, unfortunately, because now they're done playing the Oilers. But they got to go out and show that on the road now too, and that will be the true test. They kind of did in Toronto, despite getting victimized defensively. They had a pretty strong offensive effort, and they stuck with the Leafs really well in that game. But like I said, they got to be better defensively on the road and show they can play well with anyone on the road as well. And now Jacob Bernard Docker, what did I think of him and his NHL debut? I thought he was solid, you know, he wasn't like overly noticeable or anything, but he, he looked solid, like I said, and he didn't look nervous, he looked very poised out there, I thought, he just looked like another one of the players uh, on the Sens that, you know, you think he, he wasn't in his first NHL game if you didn't know it. And for Bernard Docker, I don't know how big of a point producer he's going to be, I think he'll produce a decent amount of points, maybe like a 20 to 40-ish point guy on the back end will be his full potential. But he's going to be good at both ends of the rink. That's how he described himself in his intermission interview where he said, you know, I'm a guy that's going to be good both ends of the rink. And, you know, I take a lot of pride in playing well at both ends of the rink too. So I think that's something us as Sens fans can look forward to. So those are my thoughts on this game. Please let me know what all of you think in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe and share this video as always. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again soon.